Good afternoon and welcome to our <clears throat> Wednesday afternoon Bible study on this Wednesday, uh, the uh, 29th of September. Uh, we're so glad that uh, you have decided to join us this morning, this afternoon, and we are making our way through the Gospel according to St. John. Um, <clears throat> I hope you've had a good week um, and that you're that this beautiful day finds you in uh, a pleasant place with uh, in a pleasant frame of mind. Um, <clears throat> it's a long way from a beautiful fall day in Salem, Virginia, sunny fall day in Salem, Virginia, to uh, the courtyard <clears throat> outside of the high priest's um, offices where Jesus is, be, is uh, being tried at night. But that's okay. We, we, it's hard to, hard to imagine that scene anyway. What we have to do is take the message of that scene and try to feel it understand it as well as we can and then move into the move it into the world in which we live now. Um, that's not always easy, but that's what God would have us to do. Uh, let's begin with a prayer. Lord, your blessings on us, we pray. As we study uh, this ancient word, may it be for us a word of truth and a word of um, comfort and a word of challenge and a word that leads us to new life. Uh, in, in the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, so we're in the middle of the Passion now, and uh, the Passion narrative in the Gospel of John. We're down to the 25th verse. Uh, and just ahead of that, um, Jesus is telling Annas, the father, I believe, father-in-law of the high priest Caiaphas, that... Um, <clears throat> that he hasn't done anything wrong. Why are you treating me like this? I haven't hidden who I am from you. And um, I've, I've said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, "How is is that how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? In other words, John is trying to make clear to the reader that Jesus is, un is being unjustly uh, persecuted, that he's innocent and he's being unjustly persecuted. Then Annas, that is the, um, I believe, uh, my brain all of a sudden is not really working, I think Annas is um, Caiaphas' father-in-law. But anyway, Caiaphas is the high priest. And so Annas, who is a member of the uh, Sanhedrin, sends Caiaphas, sends uh, Jesus to uh, bound, sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. And so again, as I said last, last week, again, what we're to see here is different from what we see in the other Gospels. Big surprise, right? You, sh you and I should understand that now after having, after having been with uh, the Gospel of John for a little while, that what we see in John's Gospel is going to be a little different. And I want you to think about, and we'll think about together, what is it that, that who is this Jesus in John's Gospel? And, and if, if, um, if, if the notion of the whole notion of John's gospel is, as I have argued all along, is that is is predicated on the first chapter. That is, Jesus is the Word made flesh, the self-expression of God. Then what is it that that John's Jesus says about the nature and character of God? And therefore, what does it say about how we should live as those who follow Christ? Um, who is our way in truth and life. And what we see here in these in these verses is pathos. What we see here 
is a, a willingness to be abused. And that's that's a difficult that's a difficult thing to imagine, isn't it? In this day, and especially, we don't really believe that, and for good reason. I mean, we think of all the sexual abuse, spousal abuse that there is out there. We don't want to tell people that it's okay to be abused, that you should let people abuse you. On the other hand, Jesus wants his disciples to understand that submitting, submitting to the evil of this world can be a virtue if in doing so you're submitting yourself to the will of God. In other words, Jesus is not concerned with what they do to his body. Jesus is concerned about fulfilling God's purpose for him. And 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 that's the that's what we're supposed to be thinking about, okay? And we and we're not Jesus, it is true, but we're to follow him. We're to follow him. That means that people are going to abuse us on occasion and misunderstand us. We can be we can be assured of that. We you remember last few weeks we've been talking. Jesus been talking about that in these last chapters. Uh, so so here we see Jesus bound, and he's taken to the high priest. Uh, Simon Peter again. We're back with Simon was standing and warming himself. And they asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? This, so this is the second time. And he denied it and said, I am not. And one of the slaves of the high priest, the relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, that's earlier in the, in the same chapter, whose ear Peter had cut off, said, did I not see you in the garden with him, the garden of Gethsemane? So he remembers because it was his relative who Jesus, whose ear Jesus cut off. <clears throat> and again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Now, you'll recall that Jesus makes the um, prediction that Peter will deny him three times before the cock crows all the way back in the 13th chapter. 13, uh, chapter 13, let me see if I can find it. 13, uh, 31. No, it's not 31. It's 13 in here somewhere. Where is it? Oh, 13, uh, 38. Uh, Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I'll lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And this is on, this is at the uh, Last Supper, which is, get this, the Last Supper is uh, five chapters from from uh, the trial. So we have all this, all this explicatory, explanatory uh, material in between. Jesus' high priestly prayer, all that stuff. It's very, kind of interesting the way John puts it together. I hope you find so. And again, Peter denied him, and at that moment, the cock crowed. So <clears throat> Jesus' prediction comes true. Peter denies the Lord three times. So that's over. And then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. Now, <clears throat> now Caiaphas was the high priest, and Pilate is the governor. So Caiaphas is a, is a religious authority, and, and Pilate is a political authority. Now, you have to understand that in they don't think of things the way we do now. There's no separation between church and state. In Palestine, in Judea, in Jerusalem, the religious authorities, the Sanhedrin, the chief priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, <clears throat> were people of great power, and they and they decided all sorts of religious and personal disputes. They were like a, 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 a people would come before them before the council and would and 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 they would settle disputes for them, particularly those that are religious. Or personal in nature, <clears throat> and of course, all personal injury, all personal, 
accusations and what's not were in, in the community were considered religious questions, not just civil questions. But <clears throat> Pilate is is a Roman governor, and he and and it's his job to make sure that the religious authorities that Jerusalem does not get out of hand. Okay, he has that's his job. Um, <clears throat> so they took Jesus from. Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters, and it was early in the morning. And they did not enter the headquarters uh, so as to avoid ritual defilement. Who didn't? You see, the, the Caiaphas's soldiers are all Jewish soldiers, right? Caiaphas is a high priest. And, and Pilate, the, the political headquarters, is a Jewish home. I mean, a Gentile home. So they don't, they don't want to go in there. It's... Um, uh, uh, it, so, so they don't want to go into that Gentile home, and so they stay outside. <clears throat> they themselves did not want to enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and be able to eat the Passover. The Passover is uh, is 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 the Passover meal uh, that's that's coming up, and so Pilate went out to them and said. What accusation do you bring against this man? Why are you bringing this man bound to me? And you can imagine what Pilate's thinking, right? These crazy people, you know, they bring this guy here. What are you bringing him? What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, If this man were not a criminal, would we have handed him? We would not have handed him over to you. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. I don't really want to have anything to do with this guy. You know, you you brought you you've arrested him. You judge him according to your law. And the Jews replied, "We are not permitted to put anyone to death." And so they're saying that what Jesus has done is commit a uh, capital crime. <clears throat> but the Jews are not are not uh, permitted by the Romans to put people to death. So. So they're bringing him to Pilate, and, and and by the back door they're telling him, telling Pilate that they want Pilate to put him to death. <clears throat> and then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him. So he does know what, you know, they, they've told him what the accusation is, and the accusation is blasphemy, and because this is what he says. So Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? He wouldn't have asked him if he was the king of the Jews if the Jews hadn't already told him that he uh, has called himself the king of the Jews, which means that he's a blasphemer. He's claiming for himself that which is divine. And, uh, and Jesus answered, do you ask me on your own or did others tell me tell you about me? So, I mean, that's a pretty obvious question, right? How do you know, Pilate, that I claim to be the king of the Jews? Somebody tell you that? Um, and Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? So Pilate, you know, you get the idea here that Pilate is a... man who's seen, about, seen just about everything, right? And he's really callous, and he's a little bit um, cynical and sarcastic. Uh, he says, "I'm not a Jew, am I?" You know, you know. He's he's so tired of this. He's so tired of this. He's in this backwater in Judea, the last place he wants to be, and he's got all these crazy Jews that he's dealing with, and this crazy guy who says he's the Messiah, and these nuts that are following him around, and. Gee, you know, leave me alone. Can it be, you know, something reasonable that I have to deal with? Oh, excuse me. Um, and Pilate says, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation, your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. You, you know, you've come, they've handed you over to me. What have you done? Why are you here? And Jesus answered, and, you know, this gets a little weird. And what would you think if you were Pilate, right? If you're the judge down here at the Roanoke County Courthouse and some guy comes in and says this, what would you say? Uh, 
He asked Jesus, what have you done? And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. Okay. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. All right. So stop. Uh, that sounds a little crazy and weird. You know, my kingdom is not of this world. But listen to what he says. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers, that is my subjects, I'm the king, my subjects, would be fighting to save me from the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. My people, the people that are under my reign, are not fighting for me. They're not using violence to spring me. The reason why is because they're not, they don't have the values of this world. They have the values of my kingdom, which is a kingdom that, that places its trust in God and not the powers of this world. Does that mean we're all supposed to be pacifists? I don't know. You tell me. And Peter's Pilate answered him, so you're saying you are a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world. Why is he here? Why was he born? Why did he come into the world? We're going to see a hint, aren't we, of John 1 here. For this I was born, and for this I came in the world, to testify to the truth testify to the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is that I come from God, that there is a God and that God loves this world and that, and that God sends me into this world. I came to this world to testify the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. All right. Everyone who belongs to the truth, who understands what is true and right and real and good, listens to my voice. Now, I wonder if we believe that, that those who are true and right and real and good listen to the voice of Christ, even though perhaps they don't read the Bible. Maybe they hear the voice of Christ in other ways. We should be open to the possibility. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. I wonder if he means his voice is recorded in the Gospel of John, or if he means his voice in a larger context. And Pilate asked him, what is truth? Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Oh, who belongs to the truth? What is truth? Pilate doesn't know what truth is, and neither do, do most people. And <clears throat> some of the times, if we're honest about it, neither do we. What is the truth? What is the truth? Aren't we all asking that question? What is the truth? What is the truth? Is uh, the news that we hear the truth? Is the what we see on the on uh, on the network? Is that the truth? Is what our friend te is telling us? Is that the truth? Is um, the direction I'm heading? Is it the truth? Is it God's way or is it my way? Uh, you and I, we live with very little that we can say is true. Oh, sure, we can say that, you know, we believe that the uh, laws of gravity are true or something like that. But I'm talking about the matters of the heart and matters of the mind, matters of life. Um, what is the truth? P Pilate wants to know, is, is, is the truth political power? Is the truth having what you need? Is the truth gaining the whole world? What is the truth, Pilate wants to know? He's seen so much, seen so much blood, seen so much corruption, seen so much trouble. Don't talk to me about truth. What is truth? And after he said this, he went out to the Jews and again and told them that as Pilate, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Speaking of Jesus. And they shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. 
Now Barabbas was a bandit. So Pilate does not find him to be um, to have to have uh, committed any political crime. And as a matter of fact, he's kind of mocking both Jesus and the Jews by calling this by calling this Jesus the King of the Jews. So Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. Now, what's flogging? Flogging means where they take him and they tie him to a to a a, a post. They tie a, a man to a post, and then they take a whip or a cat of nine tails, which is leather strips on, and 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 they hit him across the back, flogging him. Sometimes that whip will have jagged pieces of uh, glass or or nails, metal in it, so that it rips the flesh. So what we're talking about something just terribly, terribly painful. So they had him flogged. It doesn't say that they. Um, it doesn't say that they released Barabbas. Maybe I haven't gotten there yet. <clears throat> but John doesn't say that they released Barabbas. John only says that the Jews wanted them to release Barabbas. So th that's just to show you in John's gospel <clears throat> that Jesus is the juxtaposition of the innocence of Jesus and the uh, guilt of Barabbas, and but but that God's own people. Remember John one. Remember John one. He came into his own, but his own received him not. Uh, that that they didn't know him. They didn't receive him. Uh, so his own are the people are, are the Jews, and so the Jews. This is not an anti-Semitic book, by the way. A lot of people have claimed that it is. It can be read and interpreted by others in an anti-Semitic way, but it's not anti-Semitic. Uh, I don't think uh, John's saying here that Jews are, partic are, 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 are particularly uh, uh, prejudiced uh, and, and bad people. He's saying that people of the whole wor the world, the whole world system is bad. Not, not, not necessarily Jewish people. But it's just, uh, it's just the irony, you see. The irony is that God's people are the ones that don't recognize God's Son. That's the irony. And that's part of what, and that's part of the pathos. That's part of what, what John wants us to see. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, mocking him, dressed him in a purple robe. Purple is royalty. <clears throat> and they kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. And Pilate went out again and said to them, that is the Jews that were waiting outside, look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, here is the man. What a sermon title that is. Here is the man. So you see him there. You see him there, head bowed, bloodied. His lip is swollen. His nose is broken. His eyes swollen. He's been hit and hit and hit and flogged, and he's at the he's he's at the end of his rope, and he's got this purple robe on, and and he's got this crown of thorns stuck down on his head. Blood everywhere. He said, "Look at this. Here is the man. Here is just say, look how pitiful this man is." Jesus, uh, Pilate says, "Don't you want me to release him now?" And when the chief prince priests and the police saw him that is the temple police they shouted crucify him crucify him and Pilate said to them take him yourselves and crucify him I have no case against him and the Jews answered him we have a law and according to that law he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God in other words he's a blasphemer but Pilate you know think, well, what does that got to do with me now when Pilate heard this he was more afraid than ever what's he afraid of He's afraid of disappointing them and they're becoming an insurrection and then and he losing his power. And he entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? And Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus is this enigmatic figure, bloodied, standing there, stooped, has nothing to say to Pilate. 
He gave him no answer, and Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. And what Paul and what John is saying here is that God, God um, controls the situation. God controls even evil, but that people are not released from their responsibility as uh, free agents. Uh, you would have no power over me unless it were given from you from above. So God allows God allows Pilate to do what he does. God could stop him, but he allows him to do what he does. The power that he has is God-given power. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you, that is Caiaphas, is of greater uh, is 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 guilty of a greater sin. You wouldn't be able to do anything to me had he not handed me over to you. <clears throat> And from then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. So the fact that so they're banking on him being claiming to have been the, the king of the Jews, and there's only one king of the Jews, and that's Herod or, or, or Pilate. Um and when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover, that is, the day before Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Here is your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? Again, he's being sarcastic. He's, he's thrown it in their face. And the chief priest answered, here's the, here's the line. Are you ready for the line? And the chief priest, the chief priest of Judaism, the chief priest who you, you remember all the way back when, when back in the time of the prophet Samuel, when the, when the people wanted a king, when the, Jew, when the Jewish people wanted a king, so it could be like other people. And Samuel told them, said, if you, if, if, if you have a king, he'll be a substitute for God. You won't love God anymore. Uh, and and, and you'll, you'll want your king to do everything for you. You'll recognize that you're not dependent upon God, but you're dependent upon the king. And that'll be a terrible thing because you, and ultimately you're, you're, you're dependent upon God, not the king. And then... And then he said, "We." the priest answered, we have no king but Caesar, but the emperor. And so they succumbed to that great temptation, to, the, to allowing, to, to being subject to the powers of the world. And when, he, when they said that, we have no king but Caesar, but the emperor, then he handed him over, that is Jesus, to be crucified. And so they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which is in Hebrew is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. And, when, and Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross and it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. There you go. So you see this, this business about him being king uh, goes all the way through this uh, part of the narrative. So we'll begin next week <clears throat> with um, verse 20. Uh, and, and it's interesting uh, that, that uh, John uses that uh, ascription, King of the Jews, to such, um, gives it such an important role in the Passion narrative. Um, now what do we do with all this? We need to remember that our Lord loves us and that all of this is an expression of his character and that and that that we are so enamored of our own rights and our own privileges and and in and, and, and here we, we see the Lord of love the Son of God allowing himself to be abused uh, by the rinky-dink powers 
of the chief priest in Jerusalem. So it's important that we see ourselves uh, in, in, in this story and our desire sometimes to have our own way and to defend our own actions rather than to follow the way of Christ. So in this week, I asked you to think about that, think about how you can be more like Christ who stands and lets himself be uh, subject to the powers of this world and does so out of love. What is it that God would have you and I do? What is it that God would have the church do uh, uh, in following this way of Jesus? I don't know. Good question. God be with you. Bye-bye.